What's up, it's Mr. G here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going through questions 11 through 20 of the G-Metrics Autodesk AutoCAD Certified User Practice Exam. So, we're on question 11 here. We're going to open up home.dwg. I'm gonna click this little folder up here on the top of my uh, test window. Let me make this a little smaller. Okay. Double clicking home, should open up an AutoCAD over there. I'm gonna close that. Okay, it says under the view tab within the panels view, select trim named view. I just like going to this little section right here that says top and going to custom model views and then going to trim named view that way. That'll zoom me in right here. It says extend line one to point one. So it's talking about this little purple line that's behind this box. So they make a rectangle here and I think it's just trying to make sure you can differentiate between the two. You've got a rectangle here and then a line here. It says extend line one to point one, so it just wants you to make it a little longer. So I usually just click the grip of the line and then stretch it up until it hits perpendicularly on the line above. So we're gonna select the line afterwards. It says, what is the new length of line one? Right click, go to properties, and my properties panel, I'll move that here and the new length is 459.25 okay on to number 12 home.dwg again so I'm just gonna close this hit no and then reopen it and we are going to the array named view so go to top custom model views array so it says offset the line one, 50 units to the left. So line one is this, it's actually technically, I believe an arc, but it wants us to offset it 50 units to the left. Uh, the common mistake that I have students do on this one is they'll offset it 150. So it's just differentiating, it's talking about line one, 50 units to the left. So I'm gonna click offset, which is right up here. Type in 50, enter, click the arc, Move my mouse in the left direction. Make sure you don't offset it that direction. That would be to the right. So left is this way. Click again. It wants to know the radius, so I'm going to select it. And 90.32. And on the next one, we are still in home.dwg, so I'm going to close this and then reopen it. We are going back to the trim named view. It's gonna zoom us in here. Okay, this one says select box one, which is the box or rectangle. I guess it's technically a polyline according to properties that's underneath that line that we messed with earlier. And it says using the grips, stretch box one up 30 units. So our box is here we're going to click on the middle grip right here in order to stretch. So a common mistake that people uh, make is they click on this and then they type 30, which if you were to do that, what that does is it makes the whole length of that side 30, which we don't want to do. So we want to click on the, the box and then click on this top middle grip here, move our mouse in the up direction, and then type 30 like that. And then we're left with the length is 11. 1139.31 that's correct I'm gonna close this and reopen we are going to the new walls named view so for this question it says join line one and line two so line one is this red polyline here line two is this yellow section here. All you have to do for this question is select both of the lines and type join. Then you can click on it and find the area of the newly formed polygon that'll be under your properties. Looks like we got 33227.5. Okay. Next question, question number 15. We're going to the hatch named view. 
which is here. It says create a hatch object to match the above image. What is the area of the resultant hatch object? So the hatch tool is right here. And all you have to do is click inside the middle of the box. It's already set to the correct default hatch. Um, really the hatch doesn't matter. The hatch pattern that you use doesn't matter. You can use any hatch pattern and it's going to give you the same area because all it's doing is, uh, this question is doing is asking you for the area. So I'm just going to hatch in that center section right there. Click on the hatch. Once it's uh, selected, it should give me the area over here somewhere. Let's scroll down. It's at, all the way at the bottom. So the area of the hatch is 3976.88. typed in the wrong number there 3976.88 okay closing that we are going to layer properties now zoom out a bit so this question says uh, turn off zero it's talking about the zero layer so up here in layers we have a drop down that shows all the different layers that are used or that exist in this drawing file and the current layer that we're drawing on is zero so to turn a layer off you click on the light bulb to the left of the layer drop down right here and we're going to get an error message that says hey you're turning off the layer that you're currently drawing on but we're just going to hit okay when that pops up so we're turning off this layer which will make it no longer visible there's the error message i was talking about the current layer will be turned off so we'll just click turn it off and then the question is asking which box is no longer visible so one two three four box four has disappeared and just so you know the reason why you got that error message is because now when you start drawing lines since the layer that you're drawing on is off when you draw lines nothing will show up it's still making the lines so when I turn that zero layer back on you'll see those lines but you know just for your info I'll close that one and bring it back up. So this one says, number 17, insert the block named G01 Anno2 anywhere in the drawing. So I'm going to go to the block panel here, zoom in a little bit, block panel here, and click insert. And they've already got a bunch of blocks loaded into this drawing file, so I just have to find the correct one. In this list, it should be alphabetical, and you can make this panel a little bigger. Um, I'm kind of on a half screen right now, so it doesn't stretch kind of the way I want to, but alphabetical order, I look at the first letter of this and see a G, so I know I need to scroll down to the G's. It can be a lot sometimes, so you can go here, A, B, C, G, 0, 1, and 2, and you can see what it says right there to answer the question, but just so you know, cl um, you click the block right there. And some problem people will have is they'll be so far zoomed in sometimes and they'll click and they'll say, where's my block? I don't see any block. I don't see any text. What is this question talking about? Um, they kind of try and trick you by making the text. It's so large, you have to be zoomed out to kind of see it. So um, just one more time here. If you go to insert, you can see it. It's attached to your mouse as long as you're not zoomed in crazy like that. So the answer to the question was certified. Number 18, and I didn't, I didn't change anything. All I did was insert a block, so I'm not going to re-close and open this one. It says, under the View tab, uh, we're going to Text Style. Text Style. It's here. Got a little section. It says, what is the style of the EPS object? So really, you can just click on the EPS object right here and go to the Properties. And it's talking about the text style. So under the text section of properties right here, the style is called room. And just to further talk about that a little bit, under the annotate tab, there are different text styles set up for this drawing file. They have a bunch, and the names of them are always on the bottom right here. So this is this is the text style that that, that EPS is currently on. And text styles just manage, you know, what font you use, the boldness, how big it is, stuff like that. But the answer to this question is just literally looking for what style it's it's categorized under. 
which is room. Number 19, this one asks to open grip editing. So I'm going to close home and open up grip editing. This one says using the grips, change the rectangle to match the image. So it looks like we just click on the square that exists here. And remember the grips are these blue little nodes that sit on on the surface of your object that you have selected. So using the grips, change the rectangle to match the image. It just wants you to move this corner, this upper right corner of the box into point two. Um, and what's important is that you zoom in and get it right on that insertion point right there. Common mistake is students will put this on one of these endpoints by accident because they're too far zoomed out. So make sure you zoom in so you can snap to the correct location, click there. And it wants to know the new area, which is 684. Okay, we're going back to home for number 20. This one says draw a three point circle using the centers of A, B, and C. So it's talking about these big uh, white circles that are here, one, two, three. And it says, what is the diameter of the circle as shown in the properties dialog box? So it wants us to make a, the, a three point circle. So I'm gonna go back to the home page here and you just have to remember that there's a bunch of different circle tools and one of them is three point. And then you literally just click on the center of these circles in order, A, B, C, and it creates a very large circle that goes through the centers of those other ones. Then we select it and we look for the diameter, 5444.21. Should be the answer for that one. All right, and that's it for 11 through 21.